Okay, I'm gonna see this guy. This is peaceful raging. We're going to continue with the next chapter, Journey Downstairs, and I just hit my drawer. So if you were curious what that sound was. Alright, let's do this. You head down the hallway and step into the open elevator. The lights inside flicker and you hit the, the button, down button. Nothing happens. You realize there not, must not be enough power going to the building for the elevator to work. The melted door of the stairwell beckons you. As the fog of the hangover slowly lifts, you recall the stairwell is closed for repairs below the third floor landing. Bless, the best plan is to walk there and check around for a phone. You step inside the darkness. A wave of cold air swallows you. A low humming echoes in the distance. But the closest sound is that same scratching noise. It seems to be coming from all around you with no discernible source. How do you proceed? Let's run. Let's run. Chariots of fire. Dun 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 Hold on guys, let's let's play this with some better music. Now again speeds descend each floor. Each step is taken carefully as the darkness is thick. You can only see a few feet ahead. You use the railing and feel out with the other hand in front of you. The air is musty and the darkness surrounds you. Your legs scrape against trash and debris as you rush down. A faint groaning and creaking resonates through the walls, as if the building is swaying in some strong wind. Your foot presses down on something soft, but you keep your balance. Vaulting over whatever is beneath you, the debris shifts and rises, spilling trash out for, outward from the center point, where you perceive a figure rising from the midst of the debris. It stands maybe six feet tall, but other details are lost in the darkness. He creeps towards you, reaching out with his, each hand. His arms long and fingers curled, he stumbles forward with his legs at all angles, stepping in and out of the trash with the difficulty of being held by quicksand. That was amazing, guys. That was amazing. Hold on. <laughs> That was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect music for that moment. All right, let's keep going. Cool picture, bro. Eh? How you doing? The man darts forward, but you sidestep and run half a flight down the stairwell. A high-pitched scream pierces the air, and you know your next move is critical as the zombie is closing in. Um, let's see here. Use my revolver. The zombie lunges at you, but you scramble out of the way, landing hard against the stairwell wall. He leaps again, hands outstretched, but you drop down and roll into his body, the jagged edges of the stairs digging into your back as you tumble down the stairs. You roll until you reach the next landing, and your body crashes into the cement floor. You kneel and yank out your revolver, and your body you yank out your revolver and the zombie is fast and nearly upon you. Taking the best aim possible in the darkness of the stairway, you pull the trigger. The zombie's head flips backward and the momentum sends him his crashing into the wall on the side of the landing. His body twitches and the limbs convulse as a thick liquid oozes from the hole in his skull. You keep the gun raised, ready to fire again. After a few moments, the creature's body goes limp. You slump to the ground. Your heart is pounding and breathing is so rapid. You wonder if you're having a heart attack. Minutes pass and you regain your strength with your heart rate returning to normal. You step past the zombie's body and walk several flights down the next landing. You open the third floor door and step inside. Next chapter, third floor. Let's do this. I'm going to make these videos a little bit longer so you can get a little bit more out of every video. But that was the most fun I've ever had with <laughs> reading. Was Chariots of Fire playing while I was reading? Uh, progress saved. Should you die during the next chapter, you have the option of trying again from this exact point or to replay the game from the very beginning. Please note that this option applies only to the session. After quitting the game, the next time you play will be from the very beginning. So, I gotta play this game in one continuous strain. Yep. 
Things just got more real. Sure, it was disturbing to watch on TV, but dealing with an actual infected person, a zombie, kicked up the intensity. You have to locate Emma. Either reach her by phone or go outside and get her. And, for, or, and find her. You move down the hallway. It's only a few degrees warmer than the stairwell, and you rub your arms to generate some heat. The hallway runs east-west and is wider than other floors. As you recall, this is a corporate floor with management offices, maintenance, and a cafe. Let's go to the cafe, guys. Let's get some coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Coffee. You walk down the eastern corridor amid the darkness. You have a cons constant, uneasy feeling of something following you. The sounds of swinging doors and strange clicking noises fills the hallway. Parted plants line the path, most, over t most turned over and broken, creating dark patches of soil along the ground and the smell of earth lingering in the air. Up ahead is the double swinging door, currently fixed open, and the sign above reads the City View Cafe. As you get closer, the sign lights up for a moment, and you pause from the sudden flash. Inside are rows of metal chairs and wooden tables spread across the hardwood floor with a wrap round corner for ordering food and drinks. Long fluorescent lights cut dimly through the darkness. One long table, you spot the figure of a man hunched over a woman lying across the table. You creep forward watching for any movement and unconscious of making any sounds to alert the man. As you get closer, you see that the figure is wearing black pants and a black shirt and a hat turned backward with the cafe's logo across it. He is focused on the woman and nothing else, including you. In the room, his body shifts on the table and uncovers the woman, who has a large red area on her chest and midsection. Turning his head, you spot a string of substance from the woman to the man's mouth and realize in immediate horror that the man is feasting on the woman. The man tears at the woman's flesh with long pieces of organs covered in blood being fed into his mouth. The woman's head is caved in beyond recognition and the thought that this could be Emma sickens you. The zombie drops off the table into a chair and slips out a portion of intestine. Ew, That's freaking sick, guys. You hold out your hand over your mouth and draw a heave start, but you stifle them back. You consider leaving the cafe, but notice a cell phone sitting on the edge of the table when the zombie is having his meal. That's pretty elegant if you're sitting in a chair and then feasting on somebody, so you know. There, there's one positive way to look at it. I'm killing the zombie. You draw your weapon and it fights the zombie. Shark glances off his right bicep and knocks him to the ground. It does not kill shot, so you ready your weapon again and shoot again t to end his miserable life. Zombie springs up and leaps 15 feet into the air, landing on a crouch with eyes trained on you. Its face is covered in green marks raised off the skin, and its flesh is deeper yellow than others of its kind. A rancid odor fills the area. Backing away from the ravenous zombie, you circle left, but the zombie moves faster, cutting off your movement. It faints in and back, toying with you like it is waiting for an opportunity to strike. This is not a mindless creature, but seems to have a strategy other than rushing straight in. When it faints left, you move right. It pushes you back with each step of the elaborate dance. And there is a corner not far from now where you stand. You realize that it is forcing you back to the wall. Sweet. This zombie's smart. Hold on, guys. Just out a deep third howl, as if calling to others. You take the initiative and leap forward to the monster's left. As it slides right, you aim ahead of it and fire off around. The creature is so fast that it catches up to the blast as you predicted. The whole tear across its thigh with a chunk of meat peeled away. The zombie crashes to the ground. Brown jelly spills from the wound, but the creature rises to its feet, only to stumble to the ground again. It claws the air between you. You level your weapon and fire once more into its head. The contents of which splatter across the cafe floor. Worried of the possibility of other zombies near you, run over and grab the cell phone. You take a moment to inspect the woman on the table and breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it is not Emma. You move through the back doors of the cafe. A short distance down the hallway, a door leading is is a door leading to the stairwell. Pure darkness greets you, but a commotion below guides you to the ground floor. Next chapter: the Ground Floor. Progress saved. Only a few rays of light peek through a small window in the lobby stairwell as you descend the unlit stairway. A cacophony of 
sounds flow from the other side. Breaking of wood and glass. A woman screaming, sirens blaring, a man yelling orders to fire, and loud grunting of what you can only assume are more zombies. You step through the door and see a riot of activity. On the right of the stairwell door, two corpses lie on the ground. A young woman in a tan and green sundress and an older man in a business suit whose head is half torn away. To your left, the lobby opens up to a plush leather couches and chairs, towering plants and a central fountain. Its beauty is in direct contrast to the rest of the lobby, which shows the aftermath of the battle of zombie versus man. Dead bodies are scattered about all shapes and sizes of corpses, and at least a dozen in count. Humans lie with their throats ripped open and trails spilled out and limbs twisted in angles. The expressions of horror frozen in their dead faces. Standing at the east side, trapped in a behind a counter formerly used as a reception area, are two young women using brooms to fend off an advancing zombie dressed as a bike messenger. To the north is an office with a place called reading Bride Spencer. Deep goal marks are displayed across the office door. Lying in front of it is a handsome man in a charcoal gray suit with his leg badly injured and a pool of deep crimson blood creeping out of a wound on his thigh. <clears throat> uh, the south side is triple glass doors used as the building's main entrance. Two policemen stand on the street side holding the doors closed, automatic rifles in hand. You realize they must be controlling who goes in and out. It may be difficult to get to them by to get to them without helping the woman fighting off the zombies or helping the man by the manager's office. You also notice the electricity must be on again as the, the elevators are lit up. You curse silently concerning the ordeal you had taken the stairs. What is your next course of action? Well, obviously I need to help the women fighting off the zombie. Because they could be help later in their story, I don't know. You move toward the reception area to gain a better view of the action. Zombie bike messenger is a skin tight red and black racing suit. He appears almost comical as his helmet is strapped across his black against his back and not black, balancing as he chases his potential victims. You consider the bad luck he had of having gear to protect his head and not using it. A large circular piece of flesh and skull is missing from the back of his cranium. You hear the loud hum of an MP3 player on full blast as the earbuds dangle around. How you doing? Hi, my name's Peaceful. What's yours? The two women are early 20s and dressed as if coming from a jog. You formulate a scenario in your head in which the two women were casually jogging down the street and the bike has stopped to flirt with them, only to progress to the current situation. Mindy, he's coming to your left. Skims the tail of redhead. A ponytail flailing around like the blades of a windmill. I got him, Candice, says the shorter woman. She has a jet black hair and a pixie cut. You admire the shape of the hairdo and how it frames her face, momentarily forgetting they are in the fight of their lives. Candace and Mindy are playing in a game of mercy merry-go-round as he is chasing them in a circle around the receptionist counter. Each has a long broom which they use to thrust to keep him away as if he gets too close. You wonder if they have made no attempt to leave through the lobby exit and wonder if the police have anything to do with it. Um... I'm gonna shoot the zombie. But yep. Zombie circles around the receptionist deck to the lobby side. You aim and fire before it crosses behind the desk from diff from this distance is hard to miss and you have a hole into his back. He crumples to the ground and has a look of shock in his face as if warning who shot him. You walk forward and fire once more, this time in the head, and liquefy the ex-bikes messenger's brain. Your humanity increases. Sweet. Mandy and Candice run over. Thanks so much for help for your help, says Mindy. She breathes hard and inhales deeply, then shakes out her legs and arms. Yeah, that was amazing, says Candace. I can't believe no one else does. Mindy looks around and sarcastically, Yes, all of the dead people didn't lift a finger. Um, what should I do? Seriously, guys, I don't know. Offer them water? Man, fun. You reach, you reach into your backpack and take out a bottle of string, spring water. Yeah, take this and drink it all. Dehydration is a killer. A pair of smile and take turns 
drinking the bottle and thank you for offering it. Your humanity increases again. You must be exhausted from running around so much. He was chasing us for 20 minutes. By the way, I'm Candace. I'm Mindy. And this is Candace. Nice to meet you. I'm peaceful. We should get out of here. The police wouldn't let us by with a zombie running around. What is your next course of action? Mm. Sure, let's search the young woman. The woman is mid-thirties with brown hair and green eyes that almost match the color of her dress. She has a coach handbag with by her side with sparse contents, lipstick, eyeliner pen, hairbrush, a broken cell phone, and several scratch-off lottery tickets. You see no marks on her body. There is no rise and fall to her chest to denote breathing. You hear no heartbeat. The only thing you notice is a twitching of her left leg. You step back from the body. What is your next course of action? Um. Search the older guy. You need beside the tall and slender old man in a brown business suit who is face up and staring at the ceiling with dead, glazed eyes. Mmm. The hole in his head faces you. A brownish meaty mess of bone and flesh with jagged edges. Blood is poured in and pierces a red halo around the dead man's head. His fingers and hands are, have abrasions, and the ends of his sleeves and jacket close to his wrists. 